So what's intriguing about this one um, is with, we were just about this very brushy uh, ground and sort of the painterly interiors here, but then this is a, a much more sort of rigorous structure with the starkness of the black and the white and the arc, but yet it's painterly in here with sort of a, a red underpainting and white over it that makes it sort of pink, but because of everything else going on, it reads very white from a distance, and then you have this little bit of the yellow here. So to me, what it sort of does is set a suggestion of, of space and oh, dimensionality. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And then this, this push-pull from the, the, the color choices of, of these uh, geometric shapes starts making you feel like there's a spatial depth between each of these. I would think. I, for, you, you know, there's about 50 layers of paint on that. 50 thing. layers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there, there's, no, there's nothing where... You know, just put one thing down and one thing over it, right. and that's it. But that would be impossible for me to do. So it, it, it took about, I don't know, nine months to paint. And um, I knew that uh, after I'd gotten it going, I, I knew that there was going to be this field and it was going to be uh, um, governed by these... Uh, shapes that would go on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, the pink came quite late, and it was because the white was too bright. Too bright, yeah. Um, and um, that's what I'm saying. It, it reads very white. It doesn't take much white against this ground to really stand out. So no, it could be a very neutralized sort of, neutralized in a weird sort of term for talking about white, yeah, but toned yeah, down sort yeah, of white. Yeah, yeah. And it still has the same effect. Yeah. But the black and just this little bit of dimensionality with the, you know, this, sure. like a 30 degree angle sure. between the black and the white, sure. it immediately gives you this sort of interior dark edge, you know. So you, you've set up essentially the light source coming this way. I guess, yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to think about it that way. Even though these are abstractions, there are, you know, you, that's the other thing too in your work. Um, I've never seen it discussed per se, or maybe I, I haven't really found it yet, or you heard, you've seen you write about it much, but you have strong figure ground relationships in your, your paintings. Yeah, and, so in, in some of them, yeah. Yeah, I so it's, they're, they're not just all sort of color field. There's, there's really strong sort of, um, sort of like a focal point in, in, uh, yeah, in many of the paintings. Or several. Or, you know, or multiple, yes. Yeah. The, um, um, to me, you know, the, 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 the thing about a painting is if you put a yellow up here and a yellow down there, they're not necessarily in the same field at all, even if they're the same yellow, because one's up here, one's down here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so I kind of I keep painting on them until they seem to have come together, usually by not quite coming together. Um, I expect that um, what was going on there. I painted this after these 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 two. Yeah, these two. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, uh, the red one's called uh, deliberate. And it, it, the things, the elements that are on the surface, as you would say, um, are very different than these. Yes, completely. And uh, yeah. these are sort of falling down. There's, there's the ones of the, of the, the pink and black mm -hmm. and the yellow sort of standing on top of the surface to some extent. Right. The, the brownish red is obviously somewhere between those two and the one down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's an advanced painting in as much as there's, there isn't a logical way to get from one of those colors to the other, excepting Correct. through color. Yeah. And um, so featured as, as um, shapes. The, the thing that how, how I, 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 when I painted in acrylic paint back in the 70s, first part of the 70s, um, they were hard edged for a reason, which was that the lines that bounded things were supposed to hold them apart as well as keeping them together right. in, in, at the same time. Because it was very formally around color. 
And so they for became silver. just vessels for color. And so the object themselves were not really the, the focus. It was more uh, simply a vessel for the whatever the exploration or was, you know, the empirical exercise yeah. with color. It always has. When been. you think about color field painters, you know, traditionally and things like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, it was Manet primarily, and uh, Manet pr primarily. Yes. And um, yeah, well, impressionists as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you think about geometry, you think of sort of the you know the color field painters and circles, lines, and dots. Yeah, and I mean again, grids. yeah, but you know Myron. You, t you mentioned Myron when I came in. Mm -hmm. Myron Stout and. Myron also painted on paintings forever. You know, there's one story about, I was told this by the guy at the Modern Museum responsible for dealing it, where they, they damaged the Myron stout, very mildly damaged it with floor polish by splashing on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a drawing and they sent it to Myron. And then seven years later, they realized they'd never got it back. <laughs> and they, they called Myron and he said, what's the hurry? <laughs> he, so, you know, nearly everything in my painting is, um, these days, it matters if I put color on top of nearly wet color. It matters if I let the color dry before color goes on top oh, yeah. of it. That's why they take so long. Yeah. Because um, these are just, uh, to, to give perspective to your comment, for people who haven't looked at the checklist, uh, these are all oil on linen. Yeah, yeah. So that's why the, the time element uh, for drying, unless you're doing wet on wet, yeah. you know, if you're trying to do something uh, specific, uh, and that's why we'll get to the, the sort of more gridded one over here. You wanted very subtle variations and you had yeah. to let it dry so you could see exactly what see, the one see, was see before you laid was, the next one down. So yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see where yeah. that took a long time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. And um, uh, the, the lines between things now, it, it matters whether, they're, how, whether they melt or whether they are relatively demarcated. I mean, and this, mm -hmm. the, if you want to talk about the edges of things, well, they're kind of different in all of those four shapes in the way that they meet the blue, mm -hmm. um, for example. But yeah, yeah okay. Um, so that kind of brings up when you were touching on that, um, a comment you made in a correspondence to me, which I thought was interesting. Um, and people do tend to, what stands out uh, in your work, and again, this is just the binary you know, that you have where you um, are not afraid of um, having something that's very gestural or you know, brushy um, and, you know, alongside uh, things that are very geometric. No. And so, but and so the geometry tends to stand out a lot in your work. I think mm -hmm. for that reason. Yeah, and yeah. so then I think people, you know, refer, like as you said, refer to your work as geometric. Yeah. And um, and it, it, there are geometric elements, but you're not uh, like a rigorous geometrician. You you sort of kind of go with what inspires you and, and what sort of pairs up with it in your mind when you're doing it. But you made the comment that uh, you thought that perhaps. Um, um, post-minimalism would be a better way yes, to so. describe your work. I think so. Yeah. Um, which minimalism, a lot of it does lean on, obviously, geometric shapes sure. and things. But, um, but when we think of post-minimalism, we tend to think more about the process. And what you've just been describing is a lot of process. It's your thought process, your co how you compose, how you react to you know, the first mark and the next mark. Sure. And you contemplate the, the next mark very much. So it's not like your works are spontaneous or sort of this, this you know, all, you know, very abstract, expressionistic sort of painting at all. No. It's very I mean, structured. Some more than others, but they're not. It's yeah. structured, and it's a structure that's found, and um, a musical structure. And the thing about music, as has been said, is that um, unlike uh, logic, um, the, the, you can't predict in a piece of music what comes next. In a logical tract, of course, you can. And uh, the Greeks, in fact, wrote it that way. So that you, Aristotle never read everything he'd written. It was just the first part of the line gave you the rest of the line. But, but in, in music... Um, well, especially in first, jazz music, where there's a lot yeah, of improvisation. Yeah, also plenty of classical music. The next... The next um, 
note of an extra stanza is not necessarily f derived from the stanza before it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think about geometry, or actually arithmetic more than geometry, but that, that part. Um, mm. uh, but in, in the way that a musician w might choose it. And, um, uh, and as for this, you know, the, the paintings are getting better all the time, so I get less and less, um, less and less committed to where they're going to go when they start out. The thing about the difference between my painting and most people's paintings is that uh, everything goes. That you can have a hard edged part of a painting, mm -hmm. a, a, a cloudy part of a painting, a fluid part of a painting, a very solid part of a painting. And it's that multiplicity that uh, makes the painting. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, most, uh, a lot of other people's paintings, you know, there are things they can't do or they can't do in this painting. That's never true for me. And um, that's why you end up with something. Well, you like just sort of answered my next question was um, how much does color theory enter into um, your palettes and your work? And I, I would argue not much. <laughs> and so um, there, but it's sort of more of an, your intuition to color because you have a lot of times, you know, saturated and then and very desaturated colors in the same. Oh, and that's, yes, of course. In the same yeah. painting. So yeah, it sure. sets up a whole different sort of contrast and effect. Yeah. And so, um, so I guess I would argue your, um, your palettes tend to be more intuitive and, and you sort of, um, sort of respond as, you, as you're going along. Yeah, because it's what that color in that place needs to do. Right. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, it, it's certainly intuitive as opposed to predictable, predictive. Um, I don't, you know, it's a, and there are other things too, so that most color theory is about making things that go together in terms of harmony. Mine With is, some sort of a, a logic, yeah, some sort yeah, of a yeah, predictive mine, logic. Mine, mine yeah. are not about that, yeah. you know, they're about, they're about... Uh, that kind of gets back to your mathematics question, so yeah. that, so when it comes to color, there's, you know, a rigorous colorist, you know, or theorist is probably more equated to something in mathematics, but what I would argue with yours is, yes, maybe mathematics, but largely probably calculus, <laughs> like multivariate calculus. Yeah, maybe and sometimes what you're showing us is just a narrow sliver of that equation, not the full equation. And so I think that's what's kind of interesting is you choose different times what you're going to reveal in terms of the, the, the totality of the shape or the suggestion of the shape. Yeah, and also, um, again, to come back to it, it's, it's always a question of, well, what do you actually want it to do? Mm -hmm. What do you want it to demonstrate? There's a right. difference, yeah. And um, so, yeah, sure. There's also um, something in your work too uh, that is um, a lot of them. There's a an, 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 even though they take a, you say a long time. There's some that um, look like you stop just short of maybe consciously to to not overwork something and to leave it sort of wanting more, the potential for more, to keep it sort of fresh or sort of create a little bit of an imbalance. And then other times it's like you, you, you keep adding to the, to the, to the piece. And, so that, and then it reminds me of your other comment you made in a correspondence to me about the wall of sound. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you were referring to Phil Spector because <laughs> like what I wrote <laughs> about it, it I, I parlayed off of that because when I hear wall of sound, it's immediately I think Phil Spector. Mm. And, um, but I can sort of see that you know, in some of yours where you do have this sort of, you know, sort of more reserved or hold back. And then there are other times when it's like, you know, all bets are off, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. that's another dichotomy or, or binary <laughs> in your work. Sure. You know, so you have binaries within elements in your work, which that piece is a great example of, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the one you said, um, the geometric one from 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and then others, you know, um, are kinship between paintings, there's this relationship and then sometimes between series. So you have this different dimensionality of how you sort of 
how your binaries operate, it seems like. And uh, that's sort of what's interesting about this show, because it does allow the viewer to see that there's a continuity, but at the same time, there's, they can see very effectively side by side decades in between things yeah. and, uh, and, and how you sort of you move along. And um, it's not like you ever abandon anything completely. You just take, may come back and revisit it a decade or two later, Probably. but in a slightly different way. Mm. So you're mm. not one of those sort of people who seems to like, I've got this series and now that's done. I'm going to do this series. That's done. And I go to the next series. I haven't been able to see that demarcation yet in your au revoir, where it's really discreet and distinct. Right, well, another, again, it, everything's different than everything else. And so um, there are paintings which are, which are finished by being finished. Mm -hmm. And there are paintings which are finished by not being finished. And the, the, the fact that it's obviously not finished is what finishes it. So yeah. finished means resolution. And so, um, in most of my paintings, it's necessary for there to be some, something which is not resolved in order for things to get resolved. Mm -hmm. It's not an accident that in, in this painting, the reddish brown has got the red around it. It's what? The reddish brown has got the red around yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, that it went to and fro. And the, the, um, the and a fair amount of the the green, um, which I don't know if that kind of came about from applying yellow and it was sort of wet on wet, or if it was intentional. But um, but again, this is an example where you, you you have to call out and actually say yellow. But there's bits of yellow here, here, and here. Here it's a stronger um, dose, if you if you will, uh, in there which has an interesting effect against um, that white and black, which really sets it apart. They kind of govern things as a starting point in the row. And uh, they establish uh, a um, duality, if you say, as you might say. And then it becomes a question of well, what comes next, what comes next, what comes next. So, Probably the most crucial thing to think about if you want to think about that sort of thing is the yellow, which is like clearly the thinnest paint there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not regular, doesn't have to be. Um, it links things by holding them apart. One of the ways it holds them apart is by having nothing to do with anything. Uh, so, you know, you need to think about musical instruments and how they interact with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, this, um, this painting, you know, is called a cello. It's called something, something cello. Mm -hmm. and, and that's because the cello is one of the instruments that holds the orchestra together. You have like maybe 12 cellos spread through an orchestra and about six double basses to establish this, no, these, these, this tonality, level of tonality that will be throughout, mm -hmm. while around it is all sorts of other things. Um, and and that, that, that leads to the point that you know, one color is not the same as another color. They have different qualities. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you don't expect people to consciously register. But there's an internal harmony achieved. Yeah, 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 yeah or an internal disharmony. That just depends what you're working on. Mm -hmm. 